Hey guys, I'm back with another prophetic update. Before I share this update, I uh, I want to make sure that I clarify <laughs> as much as I possibly can for everyone so people don't get confused or misunderstand what I'm saying. So, I know I'm speaking a lot about the beast system receiving a head wound and things miraculously turning around. Um, but we have to fully understand that picture. So if something is wounded, that means that it's damaged or hurt or hindered. It doesn't mean that it's dead. Okay. Those are two completely different things. Um, so it's, uh, mortally wounded as if it was dead, but it's not really dead. Okay. So... We have to remember the difference between wounded and dead. So when I speak about wounded, that doesn't mean that the beast system will be completely defeated and dead and nowhere in sight, you know, and just completely it will never do anything bad or it won't. I mean, it's still there. It's just very damaged. OK, and being hindered, slowed down um, and overcome to a certain degree so I want to make sure I clarify that so inside of this wounded phase where it's becoming weak and destabilized it is still living uh, and breathing and so because of that which I draw up the analogy all the way back in my what video was it all the way back in my Passover season of blessing videos I drew uh, the perfect picture and analogy of how the end times would be proceeding uh, from this season forward in this temporary phase of the head wound phase. I drew the perfect analogy and picture so people wouldn't get confused. It's not about either or will it be bad or good or wonderful or evil. It's going to be both going on at the same time. And if you didn't fully watch this video and pay attention, you wouldn't have gotten that picture and analogy. Okay? I gave the analogy of the Lord parting the Red Sea. Does that mean he made all of the water in the sea evaporate and disappear and made it all dry land? No, he didn't do that. He parted a portion of the sea to make dry land only for his people. So they could be rescued and protected and saved um, and took into safety. So that's the exact same picture we're having now uh, going forward. It's not that the beast system will be completely defeated or cease to exist uh, in totality. It's just that a pathway is going to be made through it to where it, um, there's going to be a pathway made for the world for God's people to be protected from it and also to accomplish his will, which is the harvest. So I hope everyone is understanding that picture um, correctly. So you guys just don't get comfortable and think, oh, everything's going to become good and it's going to be a turnaround and the earth is going to be perfect and wonderful and we have nothing to worry about. Uh, not exactly. So this is where it comes into play of where are you in the Lord? <laughs> That's what the difference is going to be, whether you're on that dry path uh, with God's people through the parting of the Red Sea, or are you going to be left out in the violent, turbulent, deadly, deep sea and waves? Okay, this is why our own spiritual condition is going to really start to come into play People think, oh, I, you got more than to worry about except the rapture and getting left behind. We're going into a season where we will be here on earth, okay? And the portion of the beast system that is still operating and breathing and alive, it will still be doing evil things. You will still have mass shootings. You will still have terrorist attack. You will still have evil works uh, going forth in this world, you will still have pockets of judgment and places that are being judged, okay? These are the things that are outside of the dry path 
uh, that the Lord cleared in the Red Sea for his people. These are people that are not on that straight and narrow path. Okay. You're going to, you can get left out, not just left behind before it even, a rapture even comes into question. People are getting left behind right now by being out of the will of God and not being aligned with God and not walking that narrow path. You're going to get left out in that outer court, that outer portion of the Red Sea where there's danger of drowning because you're still going to have things like Ebola. You're still going to have pestilences. You're still going to have diseases. There's still, excuse me, going to be outbreaks that kill people. People are still being judged. People are still dying. Families are still being uprooted out their homes and fires are still happening. People are still being displaced. Children are still dying. So I have to make that clear that uh, this miraculous turnaround is not going to make all judgment go away and all danger go away. It's about making a pathway for the world to be able to come to the Lord in repentance and for God's kingdom to be able to be successful and thrive in the earth so we can have that outreach for that last day's harvest to bring in that harvest before the end. So it's not a get out of jail free card for everyone to go do whatever they want and think, oh, everything is about to work out fine. Actually, no, <laughs> you can still find yourself in a very horrible situation. That's why I warrant you guys about the Ebola outbreak coming to America, the threat of it. And that's why I share it with you that dream that there's going to be those who are sealed and protected in the room of protection. I covered that in this Ebola video. And then there's those that are going to still be outside of protection that are still going to have to learn lessons during the pestilences during the wars there's still going to be wars there's still going to be rumors of wars okay all of it's not going to stop completely to a complete halt it's just going to be slowed down immensely um and the lord is going to be able to operate and the church is going to be operate be able to operate within it without being censored and harmed, uh, you know, and attacked and silenced. We're going to be able to have the freedom to do what we need to do for the Lord. So I wanted to make that clear. Now, getting into this update. So this is just going back into the video that I posted regarding the new era and a spiritual shift where I prophesied that failed opposition had passed away. So trying to oppose evil um, and fight back and forth with evil and then failing, I was saying that that's going to come to an end. And I even prayed in this video and prophesied not just over the believers in right standing, but also over the president in this video, I prophesied over President Trump that he will no longer have to go tit for tat back and forth uh, with the works of darkness, with the spirit of Antichrist, with the spirit of Jezebel, with the spirit of Leviathan at work in our government right now with all the false lies and attacks and roadblocks they're trying to put up in his way while he's trying to do the right thing for the country and also execute and carry out God's will. He will no longer have to tussle back and forth, but I prophesied and prayed over him that he will go forth with a mighty David-like spirit where he will begin to slay these giants with ease and that he will go forth in fury and start laying the hammer of justice down and having mighty and very swift. That was the key word, swift victories against them and then what happened i think maybe less than 48 hours later he had a swift victory right after that i'm sharing an immediate manifestation and fulfillment of that prophecy where he had a flawless victory regarding this a census battle that was less than 48 hours now i'm going to go into showing you other fulfillments and manifestations rapidly that happened uh, as a result of that prophecy and that prayer. And I'm showing you guys an example 
of when you're aligned with the Lord and doing his work. Uh, the power, the power that we have in our hands as the body of Christ that Christ gave us. And we're not taking advantage of it. We're not using our power. We could be doing so much good, but we rather sit around on our rumps and sip lemonade and entertain ourselves. Okay, I'm giving you all an example. You guys have the same access to the same Jesus, to the same power as I do. And I'm showing you guys the immediate power and ramifications that could be taking place if the church would get off their butts and start praying and warfaring and interceding by faith in this season. And I told you guys a long time ago, we have the power to influence and control and position kings. And I'm a living example of showing you that how every single time I say something or pray for something or even just think about something, the president obeys my orders and he carries it out and he does it. Instantly rapid manifestation. Okay, where we we are supposed to have more power and authority than those who are on the earth. So instead of sitting and complaining, oh, the world's gone like this and this law and that leader and this is evil and that country's wicked, pick up your authority and start walking and operating in it. Start praying about it. Start doing something about it and using the authority that God gave us. The scriptures say that he who is in us, he who is in us, has more power than he who is in the world. So these people in high places that are so wicked, we're supposed to have more, we're supposed to have authority over them. Because that's the authority that was invested to us by Christ when he defeated the world and all the wickedness in it. He passed that um, authority onto us and the church is not using it out of laziness and a lack of focus and selfishness. So I'm going to show you examples of how one little prayer and prophesying over the anointed of God or period. It could be a wicked person and you can uh, influence and have that person do according to the will of God by faith. So here's another rapid manifestation and victory after I said that he's going to go forth with fury like David. And have victory against his enemies. Things and issues that were once a ping pong ball for decades. Our government has been arguing over and wanting to get past back and forth. Pleading with the other side. Oh guys, can you please stop abortion? Can we please do this begging like slaves? No, I said that he's going to go in with fury. And lay down the hammer of the law. In God's will and begin to have instantaneous victories. And what do we have a couple of weeks later also to add to the collection? Trump takes down abortion Goliath. Okay. Where once they were uh, defying a law he had made almost uh, over a year ago. They had been disobeying his law. That's that tit for tat going back and forth that I was talking about. Well, now effective immediately he slammed the hammer down so effective immediately he's withdrawing federal funding and government funding from uh Planned Parenthood they will no longer be able to house abortion clinics in their facilities okay they will no longer be able to refer women for abortions this is all Planned Parenthoods nationwide will no longer be able to uh suggest and refer patients for abortions or house abortion services inside of Planned Parenthood facilities. And I'm just saying here, hold the line, saints, keep standing in the gap and praying because these are the type of victories we will see instantaneously. Let's move on to some other examples of that swift victory going forth that I prophesied about and prayed about. This is my Twitter, where the energy on Twitter, the church on Twitter is alive with fire, okay? 
they are alive and energized for intercession and praying, warfare, standing in the gap, and pushing forth God's will for the country. They're not just sitting by idly watching everything happen. And this is why I'm over here. So, just pardon me one moment while I find it. I know there was another big victory he had. I'll find it in one moment. Like I said, the spirit is moving mightily over here on Twitter. It's not a dried up, dead, old place. Okay, another one. Same exact time frame and day. Trump impeachment vote fails overwhelmingly. Okay, so they recently had another vote to impeach him. But it didn't just fail. Remember that was the prophecy? about opposition failing, being defeated with the Ross Perot uh, prophecy. So it didn't just fail, but overwhelmingly failed. That's that going forth with fury and having victory over your enemies. So that, that was another swift victory for him. Continuing to fulfill the prophecy and uh, continue to manifest the prayer that I prayed. This is showing you guys the power that we have in our hand that we are not using on behalf of the kingdom of God and the will of God. Let's see what else we got. I know there's a few more that I'm going to let you go. Just bear with me. Ain't <laughs> got a long train to go through here. Okay, I, I remember one of them. So, and this is just the power of prayer that the saints possess in this season right now it's the power to move mountains okay and change the entire power structure of the earth here we go uh here i am 22 hours ago the supreme court had been on my mind and i saw a story about it been on my heart and i'm just saying did her last brush with death inspire change and repentance Okay, this was someone voting for the wicked side, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I'm asking for prayer. Let's pray. Instead of just complaining about it and watching it, let's pray her heart will be turned for righteousness. We need another seat in the judiciary now that Roberts has become a traitor. So here I'm pleading and asking for prayer and praying that we need more of an influence and we need another seat on the Supreme Court. And I'm asking for uh, righteous judges, either ones that are wicked to be turned for repentance and start voting for righteousness, or we need another person added. So the judiciary was on my heart only 22 hours ago, and I said something. Pray that her heart is turned. And within a few hours... Within a few hours, um, the president had a victory in the Supreme Court. Within a few hours, where the Supreme Court approved his uh, $2.5 billion 
dollars for the wall funding. Okay. So that's something he had been previously going back and forth, tit for tat, battling and warfaring over for the wall funding. And uh, the workers of darkness did not want to give it to him. Right. And so after I prayed and prophesied that that tit for tat battle was coming to an end and he would go forth and with fury to have victory, to overcome his enemies like David slay Goliath now the Supreme Court which I just was on my heart and I was just praying about righteousness being in the Supreme Court and then voting and doing the right thing and then that same day the president had a victory in the Supreme Court where he finally that's the highest court in the land so now that they made their decision. There's no more arguing or tit for tat anymore. There's nothing you can say against it now. Another bold manifestation and prophecy fulfillment of that. We're talking about him cutting all funding off from all parent parenthoods nationwide. Them no longer being able to refer abortions or have abortion clinics in their facilities. Okay, these are monumental changes that affect so much. So we need to once again start thinking about the repercussions of when we're not aligned with God and the will of God and we're not participating in that kingdom building. What he has called us to do, the implications of so many things that we could be affecting that we're not affecting. We were created to rule and reign. Another massive victory, then I'll let you go. Uh, all within the same day where he finally uh, gets Guatemala to enter into a agreement where they will begin to stop the massive wave of migrants from getting into our border. So they're going to now, Guatemala has agreed to now begin to stop the people in Guatemala. And if they truly are in danger, they truly need help, they truly need food and shelter, which is perfectly understandable. And uh, we perfect, you know, we definitely want to give that to people who are truly in need of it. But if it's really about survival and food and shelter and water and needing a better life, if you're really escaping for your life, then you should be able to accept that help from Guatemala. It doesn't necessarily have to come from the United States. You can now they are going to have to apply for asylum in Guatemala. So this is like a third country over from us. Instead of letting everyone just storm our borders in complete chaos, now Trump has had a victory breaking where Guatemala has finally agreed to do their job at helping to control the border crisis. So once again, another swift and mighty victory going forward for the president, which fulfills the prophecy and prayer that I released a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to let you guys go. It is what it is. Everything is right there. Self-explanatory. God bless. And I'll catch up with you later.